And can we'll chat to you in a moment. We're just going to go back. By the way, congratulations Thank again. You. Thanks, Bruce. Um, yeah. We're just going to go back and relive a bit of the emotion, the excitement of uh, the Lexus Melbourne Cup. much, Kieran? A little bit, yeah. yeah. We sat down on the couch, Kathy and I, last night and, and watched a few replays and uh, yeah, it gets the hair standing up. Um, yeah. Unbelievable to, to have done another one. Can't it, believe it. It was a spectacular ride. I mean, it's one of the great rides we think of all time. We're going to go through the race. Would you talk us through it? Because there was a lot of moments in the race where we thought, gee, you're in trouble. You may not be able to win. Yeah. There was a tragedy early in the race and you weren't far from that, we know. But Leave it with you, OK? Yeah, I went out with an open mind, as I said to Francesca, when I, when I got on the horse, and Prince of Aaron really squeezed me out of the gates and I was back, and for the first sort of five or ten steps, I thought, OK, I might sort of just poke forward a bit, and then he didn't didn't flow along, so I thought, OK, I'll just have him where he's happy, and that meant I was last. And I must admit, I didn't didn't expect to be there, but that's where I landed. But you're stone, well, practically stone-cold last there, and you're completely yep. um, at the mercy of what they do up front, aren't you, tempo-wise? Exactly. I was a bit keen here, and I had Frosty on my outside, Damien Lane on Zakata. I was right up Glynn's clacker on um, Avilius, and I just said to Frosty here in a minute, hang on, hang on, give me a couple of steps just to get out of this spot. I wanted to get back behind Glynn which Frosty allowed me to do, and then I got my horse in a better rhythm, and then, uh, as, as you'll see, um, bang, uh, Clissa Moore was, was, was coming back, and I was lucky I was just oh. able to get out without, really without getting him off an e without getting him sort of too much uh, off an even keel, so to speak, and, and then my horse got in a nice rhythm from, from there on. They still weren't going very quick, though. So what are you thinking at this stage? Are you thinking, um, gee, I've got a bit of work to do? Or are you thinking yeah. that the rhythm of the horse is OK? He was OK. He was still a little bit on it, uh, on the bridle, I say, and, and, and they weren't going very quick, Bruce. And here I was thinking far out. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to get him settled. He was, he was sort of working with me. But at the same time here, I'm sort of in between Huey and, and Laney, um, not really in a, in a spot and in a rhythm. So here I'm better now. I've got on the back of Damien. Uh, the tempo still wasn't strong but I was relaxing better, so I was in a nicer rhythm here, but I must admit, I was still thinking far out, I'm second last, because I knew Glyn was back behind me somewhere. He's funny, the horse, isn't he? Because he did sweat up beforehand. You're saying here he was never really settled in a rhythm, and then still to be able to do what he eventually yeah. did after that. From, from about the mile onwards, he got in a better rhythm. And I must say, although he sweated, I got to the gates and Ollie, you know, che cheeky Ollie goes to me, geez, Mac, he sweated up. And uh, I sort of said to him, no, no, he's all right. He was he visibly, he was, he, you know, visually he looked like he was sweating, but he was actually OK. And this is where they started to go a little bit quicker now once we got past the 1400. And as it turned out, uh, Hugh shot the barn was there. I ended up on the back of uh, Muntaha. Uh, Huey stayed in and followed the Japanese horse, ended up on the back of Muntaha. Uh, they, they sort of went out and, and then I got away from Hugh shot the barn and Zakata was on my outside. And I thought, OK, this is OK. I'm on the back of Muntaha. And there's a magic moment about to come up where you win the race, basically, where yeah, you do was, get into free. Talk us through this. Well, it was, it was a good, this was a, a pivotal point of the race. Muntaha was there, ended up in the back of Yucatan. I thought, right, how good is this? I didn't really want to follow who shot the bar because I thought he's 2 1 pace for me. Uh, on the back of on the back of J Mac, I'm thinking, okay, it's starting to develop now. I'm getting into the race without spending any petrol. Uh, and then I'm thinking, right, J Mac's going to press the button. I'm going to go bang and, fo and, and follow through with him. We went inside the horse stopping. Uh, the horse of Moroni's was stopping. Muntaha's coming with me. 
I knew Huey was going in. I thought, right, he's going to need some luck. I thought, right, J-Max sort of going nowhere. So I had to get out and get going. Now I thought, right, he, he's, he's coming. I thought, I'm going to finish. I'm still a long way off them. I could see Prince of Aran. I thought, I've got to go, and I've got to go hard. I could only really see Prince of Aran. I knew Huey was getting through, but I had my eyes on, on Michael Walker, and I thought, I've got this race. I've got this race won, and then Prince of Aran, uh, Mal Mello was there. I thought, oh, I'm too strong. I, could, I couldn't believe it. At the furlong, I thought, I've got this again. I don't reckon I've enjoyed three minutes and 20 seconds as much <laughs> of my life. That was brilliant, Kieran. I mean, God, is that the first time you've seen it from overhead like that? It is, actually, yeah. And, you know, f full credit to the horse, because, as I said, he had to pull up a, 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 a stellar last two furlongs, and um, he was he was full of running for me. And he, he's he's very genuine. That's what I got out of And William Duick spoke to me and Charlie. They said, one thing about this horse, he's very genuine. You give him a tap and a reminder, and away he went. And that's what he did for me yesterday, or on Tuesday. But you've written two Melbourne Cup winners with very light weights. Do you think that is the key to Breathe this race? Breathe all that's right weights, yeah. third one as well. Yeah, I think it is. Um, you know, you get in with sort of a head of the handicapper type thing and, and light weights over two miles. Uh, I'm lucky that I can ride light. You know, a lot of guys can't and, um, and yeah, I've got three Melbourne Cups because of it. That's the racing bit. There's the family bit that we love. Just, we love your family <laughs> because they, you sleeped in racing. Your kids are so beautiful. Your wife's gorgeous, and we know them all. And here yesterday, mate, this is priceless, isn't it? Yeah, it was great. We had some some, some tired heads, uh, me and Kathy, but we were go great to go the down there. For those and, that don't know. Uh, so we've got Charlie, the eldest, uh, Jake, and and Reese, and little Eva turned two on Wednesday. Um, they were. It was great to take them down and meet. Uh, Meet the lovely uh, Cross Counter. He, he was really gentle with him. Look at Eva, she's loving it. She's giving him some grass. Oh, she's very brave, isn't she? <laughs> Eva's a, is Eva the reason that Kathy wasn't here for your last win? That's now, right, man? yeah. Because yeah. she was pregnant? It, she was pregnant with Eva, and um, Kathy was here Tuesday, and uh, as my mum and dad were as well. So they're all here today. Granddad's got a runner in the Oaks, so uh, they're going to be fl filing around um, the mounting yard. I said to Kathy, write your number on their hands, because I'm sure you're going to lose one of them in the crowd. Oh, <laughs> wow. It, it, it's just beautiful. You must pinch yourself. I mean, three Melbourne Cups, and, but it's not just the Melbourne Cups, you're the Everest winner for the last two years as well on this this wonderful sprinter who's back here again on Saturday yeah, Red Zell. Yeah, but had a great uh, few 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 years, that's for sure, Bruce. And um, you know, getting great support, riding uh, great horses, and um, uh, you know, win, win, you know, success breeds more success. You've got to keep keep on the on, on top of your game. And um, yeah, he's been a great horse for, for us in Sydney, and um, looking forward to getting him back down here on Saturday. I won't be crass, but you've won a lot of money, here in the last sort of year and a half. Yeah, it's been unbelievable. You know, it's it's um, we we do it for the love of the sport and uh, and winning these big races is such a huge thrill. And uh, yeah, it just keeps the, the fire burning in the belly. You want to go back and do it again, and uh, you know, enjoying the carnival. It's great to be here on, on a on a nice sunny day during the carnival on a, on, a, on a Oaks Day. Well, without trying to embarrass you, I, I, I think this is what I think anyway, Cheska Kerrin. Two Melbourne Cups is enormous, but when you go to three, you actually elevate. There's only eight other people. We know only four is the record. So in many ways, you've gone from a great to an all-time great on Tuesday, in my humble opinion. Thanks, Bruce. Yeah, it's sort of, um, it's crazy to think. I mean, you, you don't sort of, I, I'm not one to sort of sit down and really think that. You're, you're, as you said, you're always looking forward and aiming for the, for the next big race or the next carnival. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I'm pinching myself to think I've won three Melbourne Cups. And um, yeah, it's a dream come true. Great to have family involved and the kids being old enough to, to sort of uh, share in the moment. I got a note from Reese this morning. He said, ask Dad about the pool. <laughs> hey, are they getting a swimming pool? Oh, getting, yeah, they're getting a new house. New house. Right. I have to buy a house with a pool. Uh, it was funny this morning, Bruce. I was walking down the stairs and I said to Reese, well, put the curtains up, Reese, and see what sort of a day it is. And he looks at me and he said, Dad, it's Oaks Day. Uh, well, speaking of the Oaks, Scamper. <laughs> yeah, Scamper. She's improving. I haven't ridden her, but I know that Troy is really uh, quite impressed. She was impressive winning a, a race at Yarra Valley. I think she beat that horse there that Craig just won on. So um, the, the form's holding up, and um, you never know. The, the top four in the market obviously look hard to beat, but she looks like a filly that will improve out in trip. Karen, thank you. That was just awesome. I love it. You. We did, all of us. Cheers. All the best, mate. Terrific stuff. Thanks, guys. Thank